in California, we're looking at some wildfires and other disasters such as potential flash flooding, some landslides going on, and whenever there are emergencies and disasters like we're seeing right now, oftentimes power and utilities are affected. So what's going on right now and how do utilities handle these type of situations we're in? A couple of things. First and foremost, utilities do this as a course of business. The difference is the scope or the magnitude of the incident. We handle everything from a vehicle hitting a utility pole and knocking 50 people out of service to major fires like we have in the Rough, the Butte, and the Valley Fire going now where we have thousands and thousands out of service. The difference in California is the fact that we have ongoing disasters every week or every month. Unlike anywhere else in the country, we are struck by wildfires, which now run the entire year. We're struck by flooding, which runs periodically. We are hit by no-name earthquakes without any preparedness notice that it's coming. But we have plans in place to address that. And all other type incidents appear on the horizon. We are designed to respond to these in the normal course of business. Now the three fires that are going on presently, we've had to ramp up significantly. Taking the two fires right now between the Butte fire, which is underway, and the Valley and Lake County fire, we have 980 PG employees on the line as we're speaking right now. Electricity is the most obvious loss of an infrastructure, but understanding that when we lose electricity, we also lose the ability to move gas, the ability to move water and process wastewater, and we impact significantly the telecommunications embedded infrastructure. Now in addressing these, on the infrastructure side for telecommunications, ATT and Verizon have stepped up significantly. We have at these fire scenes right now seven Colts. Those are cell on light trucks, or for all practical purpose to the users, they are mini cellular systems. They are also now hooked to the T1 systems. Those are towers that allow us to communicate from point to point from the top of mountains or from remote offices in which we can bring in embedded communications for those impacted. The coverage in Valley right now in Middletown, which is probably 50% destroyed, is 95% cellular, landline, and Wi-Fi. Communications in a disaster are the most critical backbone to that person struck or not struck so they can tell their families, I'm okay, I'm not okay, here's where I'm at. So we put a tremendous amount of emphasis on rebuilding the power grid so that we can repower the communications. Now in these two fires, we are looking at significant damage. In big outages, many times we don't have a lot of structural damage, but we will have a couple thousand, 10,000. 2008, we had 2.8 million out of service due to the winds and the storms, but we didn't have a tremendous amount of physical damage. High winds can take them down, we can reset the transformers. Here we have physical damage. The poles, the cables, the cross arms are all burned. They're down in the ground and every single one takes physical intervention to remove, replace, rebuild, restring. Now PG&E is using helicopters to set an awful lot of the poles in the Butte fire because they go up exceptionally steep inclines and hillsides where normally trying to get crews up by hand is prohibitive. So they're sending them up now and setting them by helicopter. That also expedites that restoration. This is an exceptionally high priority for PG&E. This is in their service area and they're supported by their 50 county embedded labor force. So they cover from Kern County almost to the Oregon border. They have adequate resources they're pulling in to do this, but it is still interdependency. 
if you lose one utility, it will in fact impact the other utilities. Power is the most, power right now is our most visible, but the fact is it has all taken the ability for us to process water. We have 23 small private water companies that are in the Valley Fire alone, and they serve 100, 200, 300 customers, but every single one of them needs power to power their pumps, power to process their wastewater, and water is essential to survival. People can be displaced and not have power and not have communications, but you need water to live. We need water to maintain the livestock. So there are a lot of considerations and that's why there is such a major emphasis right now by our power providers to get power back up to the embedded population to stabilize their lives. So what is the role that the California Utilities Emergency Association plays here at Cal OES day to day and also during an emergency and activation like we see here? We serve three purposes. We have been embedded with Cal OES since 1952. We are an embedded partner for almost life here. One of the things in an activation, we operate the Utility Operations Center, which is a subsection of the State Operations Center. We represent gas, telecommunications, water, wastewater, and power. Our principal function is to meet the needs of the state in the ability to coordinate and facilitate the response by the power companies and all of the rest. In the state, we have 41 power companies. We bring them together, facilitate their mutual aid, and make sure that they are able to support Cal Fire and Cal OES in fires like we have today. We also bring in the outside sources. We are their operation center for all utilities, and we bring that to the table in activations. But we're not idle in times when we're not activated. We serve on all of the major committees, earthquake preparedness, flood preparedness, our wildfires, we conduct trainings. We are the one-stop shop for the Cal OES and the state administration to reach out when they have a utility issue, they want utility representation, or they want utility support, either for an isolated incident or to provide input to the state on the aspects of what public private and municipal utilities can do for the state. How are things going across the state right now? We have the seven fires burning and of course other local incidents. What are we seeing? Actually, we're sitting in a much better shape than most people would believe. Our telecommunications with all of the cows and the colts that we have on site are handling Cal Fire. We're handling the three big fires and the other spot fires because a lot of them come up at 50 and 100 acres and they're put out in five or six hours. We facilitate the grid through Cal ISO and we are able to have it turned on and turned off so that we save firefighters' lives as they go underneath it. Uh, we're sitting in exceptionally good shape right now except for the drought. We serve on the state's drought task force. Those water companies that need assistance, like the ones that are gonna be in Middleton here, we stand ready to move in technicians, other water companies in our mutual aid system. But right now we're sitting exceptionally stable. We're worried that comes October, the real firestorms will start hitting, but we are well postured. And during these three fires, we have not needed to call in mutual aid. CUEA facilitated the single largest utility power response in California's history to Hurricane Sandy. And we sent hundreds and hundreds of employees and trucks, and it was well executed and represented California exceptionally well. So if the public find, find themselves in the middle of an emergency or disaster and they are experiencing some power or telecommunications issues, what are things they should keep in mind if they're in that type of a situation? Well, if in that, kind of a situation and if it's a local or a spot outage what they need to do in a storm is stay away from the down wires 
One thing they should have at their disposal is an auxiliary charging system in which they can keep their device operational because if you're out over 24 hours or 36 hours, you need to have it charged. Now, if the state or the county has stood up operation centers, we will send out charging stations for devices. We will keep OES and the state apprised of when we will restore service and where service will be restored. But they are expected to go through their normal channels in reporting outages and their normal channels when they need local assistance. Their cities, their counties will then notify OES who will then notify us. We work as a partner through OES. We don't work independently around OES.